Hi, Heather Cook here with Autism Chrysalis, and I'd like to share something with you today that clicked for me recently. So I am a certified coach and I work with a lot of autistic people like myself who have gotten to a point where they're sick of trying to be normal and they want to make a better life that works for them, for their brain, their body, their sensory needs, but they're not quite sure how to do that. So I help them figure that out. And I often hear my clients express to me this feeling of being lost, of being adrift or drowning or whatnot, and they don't really know where to go from where they are. Like they have an idea that things could be better, but they don't know how that's possible and how to make that happen. And that's, by the way, what I help them with. But what clicked for me a few days ago was that this experience is very much like the, the story of Little Red Riding Hood. So in the story of Little Red Riding Hood, she is told to stay on the path, not to stray right or left, but to stay on the path and she would, it would take her to grandma's house. And that's all of the messages that society gives us. It's the things that we're told to do, how we're supposed to behave, what we're, um, should do, shouldn't do, all of those things. And we try as we go through our life to do that as much as possible. Now, it doesn't always work. Sometimes we stray from the path a little bit, maybe go pick some flowers, but we come back and we put a lot of effort into trying to stay on the path to doing the things that we're supposed to be told, that we're told to do, that we're supposed to do, like being normal. And in the process, you have this cloak on. She wears a red cloak or a hood. Uh, I think of this as the autism mask. It helps her feel safe. It's trying to look like others, trying to pretend to be others, but mostly it helps her feel safe, to feel like she's going to be protected along this scary, dangerous road. And if you stay on this road long enough, this path in the woods, society's expectations, it'll take you to grandmother's house. Now, when she gets there, she sees this wolf that's dressed like her grandmother, but it's clearly not, but she doesn't trust herself. Like she thinks that this, that there's something wrong here. And I think that really deep down, she knows this is not her grandmother, but she's being told that this is what is supposed to be. This is the thing, the way things are supposed to be right. And she's so used to believing people and believing everything that she's that people tell her is true, that even when she questions it, and that's the closest she can get to actual defiance is just questioning, are you sure this that your grandmother, but your mouth is so big, but your eyes are so big, that she accepts the wolf's answer. Oh, it's just this, it's just that. It's the better to see you by, better to smell you. And, um, and so she, she accepts the answer, even though she doesn't really believe it. She wants it to be, she wants to feel safe. She wants to know that what she's being told is true, um, but it gets her into trouble. The So here's the interesting part is there's actually a few different stories or different versions of the story. In the original Grimm's Brothers, she gets gobbled up by the wolf and a hunter comes along and cuts the wolf's belly open and she and the grandmother crawl out of it breathing. I've never quite figured that part out. But uh, later, the Grimm's had, she cut herself out of the wolf. Um, in modern American versions, there it's less graphic. Um, they like run around in, in the cabin and the wolf chases her and uh, she gets away. Anyway, but that's that's actually part of my point though, is that there are different versions of this. We all go through different experiences. For some people, it's burnout. That was, for me, it was um, an extreme burnout after I couldn't do this game any longer. I couldn't play the the good little girl who is like everyone else. Like I just, It didn't work after a while and my body physically shut down. For some people, it's just reaching a point where they know instinctively that they can't do it anymore or they don't want to live like this anymore. There's a wide variety of reactions. People come to this place of wanting to change something for the better, 
um, from a variety of different places, but it's it's still this need, this instinctive need to to do something, to really live, live your own life. So you, she gets out of the house, she escapes, and, um, and but then she's lost in the woods. There's no clear path. The path that brought her there is that's not the path to life. That's the path to death. That's the path to the grandmother's house, to danger. So she's trying to find some, and here I'm taking liberties with the story. It doesn't really go like this, but she, but for me, I was trying to find my new way and it took me a long ways. But this is the place where I, where I meet a lot of my clients is that they've gotten to the point where they know something has to change, but they're not sure how to do that, how to make it better. And you have all of these different scary things around you. So you're lost in this deep, dark woods. There's looming trees with shadows. There's sounds of wolves in the distance howling. There's maybe an owl hoops and it freaks you out. And like all of these different things that are trying to vie for your attention, for your, to, to make you do things their way and occasionally you might even get like see glimpses of different paths and some of them might be useful for a while but they don't really end up where you want some of them are terrible paths but you try a variety of different things and and all of these things are like all the different trees and animals in the woods and all the different dangers i i see them as as the different things that we have to contend with in our lives like uh, our sensory needs, different ways of socializing, communicating, um, money, time. If you have family pressures or expectations, you need to take care of your kids, your parents. Um, people are telling you to do things. You have school telling you what to do, uh, or you need a job, or you need to keep your job. Like all of these different things, the way that you focus, the way that you process experiences, your feelings traumas from your past, um, all sorts of different things. And the goal here in this, this lost in the woods experience, it's not to stay in the woods, but you do have to contend with the different things at, uh, at different levels. Some are brief, some are long, some take a while to figure them out, but you, like, you have to learn new ways of relating to each of these things. And I'm imagining how Little Red Riding Hood's cloak at this point is, it's not gone, but it's in tatters. Like there's tears in it from the fight with the wolf. And sometimes it protects her and sometimes it doesn't. Like sometimes she can still like pull up the hood and feel invisible, but sometimes the, there's tears in it that she peeks through and people can see bits of who she really is and that's kind of scary but also maybe kind of interesting or um, yeah so um, so the goal here is like I said not to stay lost in the woods but to to contend with the different things to create your own path it's to forge a path that works for you there isn't a clear cut route that, like say society has made, you've already tried that one, it didn't work. But you have to make your own, one that works for you. And the goal here is to reach a new place, a, a safe house. Maybe you can find a cabin in the woods, maybe you can build one, um, maybe it's on the edge of the forest, maybe it's in the next city, maybe it's deep in the forest if you really genuinely want the hermit lifestyle. Maybe it's finding a new town or village to set up camp. Um, but you'll, you'll find a new house, a new place where you feel safe. It doesn't have to be necessarily a literal place, but a metaphorical um, new lifestyle, essentially. A life that really works for you. And yeah, that's the goal. That's, and it, it's not a static thing either. That new place is going to change and adapt as you change and adapt because we all do that over the course of our lives. Um, no one remains static, but 
you'll you'll have the skills at that point to know how to do it, um, how to find your way, how to navigate the different things as they come up. Um, so I made this little diagram. Please excuse my drawing skills. But so this is some of the things that I see as the, the dangers in the forest. Some of them are good things. Some of them are, um, are dangers. Some of them could be either depending on how you react to it, depending on how you relate to it, or at different times in your life, different times in your journey. And um, yeah, so I'm curious how this metaphor is, is landing for you. What do you think of it? Uh, please let me know in the comments below. And I'm curious where you are in your journey. So if you'd like to see more of these types of videos, you can cl click the subscribe button and you'll get a notification when I post a new video. I hope you have a neuro wonderful day and good luck on your journey.